Yeah, mummy. What happened, mummy? So as you might remember earlier on in this series, I said that I didn't need a floor in this storage shed and I was just going to leave it as a compacted gravel subbase. But after thinking it through a dozen times, it made sense that rather than wait a year and then pour a small slab inside it just for the metalworking area and then compromise on the rest of it and then have the hassle of bringing everything around through the garden to get in through the door to barrow it in, after a vote on Instagram, it made sense to just get on, do it in one hit, and then finish the building. Right, I won't go over old ground because we've kind of done this already. We've done it in a bigger scale when we poured the big workshop slab, and we got a truck in to pour that, and we've done it on a smaller scale when we built that porch slab. So the difference between this and the big workshop slab is we're doing this by hand, or we're mixing it in a mixer rather than getting it pre-mixed. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward. We've got a level board all the way around to reference off We're about 100 mil we're just going to put a dpm down to keep the place dry no need for well we're not going to go to the extent of doing a mesh in there it's fairly stable ground hopefully we won't live to regret that it's only just over a cubic meter of concrete so it should be a doable task ourselves i've been over a couple of times with the plate compactor we will need to do that once more but first of all uh, before that last little uh, run over. I'm going to put a bit of sand down just to kind of blind it off and that just stops any of the larger bits of gravel puncturing our plastic. As I was explaining in some of our Instagram stories, I've left off this end of the cladding for this sole purpose, so we can get all of the sub base and then all the concrete in, rather than taking it around the long way in barrows, it would take ages. Are you all right? Yeah. That was a better consistency, that bit. Right, first mix is poured now, and uh, we went a little bit big for that first mix, so I don't want to damage the mixer. Uh, we're going to scale that back, we're still keeping the same ratio, so it's uh, pretty much 6 to 1, which is kind of a standard slab mix, or 5.5 to 1, 6 to 1. Um, and we're making it loose enough that it'll shoot down okay, but of course the wetter you make concrete, the, the weaker it can get. So it's just about right what we've got now. We're going to measure the water in a bucket so at least it's fairly consistent as we go uh, and everything's going to hold and dry the same sort of rate. Something tells me it's going to take a lot longer than I thought. So originally I was going to split the floor up into two equal sized slabs and I've got a board ready if I need to but the way that I'm laying it is bit by bit it's not like it's self leveling so I should be able to just work my way across and I can stop for half an hour and it wouldn't really make an issue.
Yeah, mummy. What happened, mummy? <laughs> My head is missing. The gate was shut for a reason. At least, at least not the child. Working with children and pets, huh? Gone inside the house with cement on his feet. Right, let's sort that out then. Alright, so far so good. We've got almost, almost all of it done, but we've only got two bags of cement left. So we're hoping we can pull it off without an emergency trip to Wix. So this end, up to about halfway, is what we did this morning. That took about two and a half hours to do. Uh, and then we're just finishing off the other half now. I'm just, that boredom screening out with the wheelbarrow's gone now and we're just shooting it straight down in. Now the first half is firmed up enough, I'm, I'm going to try and float that off just with the, that magnesium float. When we did the big one we had that bull float on a great big pole. Not going to be doing that today, especially because we've got walls so it doesn't really help us. Um, but what I'm doing is precariously balancing on a ladder, which is not how ladders are meant to be used I know, um, but it means I can get in, trail this flat. I know what you're hoping for, snap ladder. So what I'm doing at this point is just knocking off any of the high spots and by using the magnesium float first it just kind of helps um, fill any tiny little pockets that have might have been left or any little uh, divots and evens it. And then what we'll do is uh, when it gets to almost the point of our first corner that we've laid it gets quite hard then, hard enough pretty much to walk on or kneel on some boards carefully and you can then go over with a steel float and then that really does flatten out any of the marks left from that magnesium float. Um, at this point, it's just fussy and completely unnecessary, but it's quite good to practice your technique on a shed because one day you might want to do an, you know, an internal floor um, or polished floor or something where you're going to lay a flooring straight onto. Another option is to use a brush. And at this point you would run a brush over it and then you'd have a bit more of a textured finish, which is a little bit more grippy on a path or something is quite handy. It's just like icing the cake, really. As you can tell, I don't do many cakes. Well, this end, which we started up at about 10 o'clock this morning, is at a point now where that could be gone over with the steel trowel. 
Uh, I've just done this, which probably needs another hour before that'll be firm enough. And then down the other end, I'm gonna be coming out in pajamas to finish that, I think. Uh, but I really wanna get a nice smooth finish because, you know, a few weeks time when this is dry enough, I might look at doing a, an epoxy or something down here just to be more unnecessary. The buzzword for today, which I told Will to keep reminding me is, it's just a shed, but <laughs> um, yeah. If you're gonna do it, you may as well do it right, I guess. And uh, there's nothing better than a nice flat floor. If you're constructing anything, whether it's out of metal or wood or whatever, a nice flat floor can be a really good tool. So uh, that's what I'm shooting for. It could be a bad idea. Right, yeah. Daddy, Mama, why aren't you touching it? Right, bit of an update where I am now which is uh, half past nine at night. And stupidly, stupidly, a few hours back, I decided to polish. I mean, it's a shed, I keep saying it to myself, but anyway, yeah, uh, I started to polish this first half. Now I've got that finished this end, which has come up really nice with the steel trowel. I should really follow through to the end, but it's not quite there yet. Not sure how well the camera is gonna pick it up in here, but we'll have a look in the morning. So this is the, the smooth, polished side. Well, fairly polished. Down the other end, I've gone all over that with the magnesium float, uh, but it's just not quite ready to be uh, to be struck off with that steel one. But I don't know, I might just do what I can. Timing is everything folks, and concrete doesn't wait for anyone. So 10 p.m., 11 p.m. came and went, and sure enough, I was out there with a the video light just finishing off that last section. This time of year, I just couldn't trust that it was gonna be wet enough to still finish up in the morning. So battled on, got it to a point where I was happy with, and then the cat turned up. No, please don't. Margot, get lost. I never did get that finished shot the next morning because one, I was exhausted and two, we went on a spontaneous camping trip. But that said, you will see it in the future videos when we come to do the roof and lining out the inside. Now, yes, it was a change of plan to, to switch to doing a concrete floor, but I'm glad we did it. It's gonna be used much more as a workshop room, this, rather than a just a storage shed, I think, so it's gonna be worthwhile doing. Material costs, I'll cover at the end of the series, but you'll, I think it was between 120 and 150 pounds to do the whole slab. Um, so it's not a huge expense, and it's worth thinking about right at the beginning, or even earlier than that, so you can just build your shed off it rather than doing an infill like this. But either way, uh, job done. If you wanna check out other concrete floor videos, laying the proper big slab for the workshop, which is still yet to be built, then I will leave the video here and also the one I mentioned about the porch. Go and check out our merchandise that's over on Teespring as well as our mugs which are on our website. And of course a huge thank you to our patrons over on Patreon. But thank you for watching. Remember if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.